from Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. And uh, I had a conversation on the air, and I, I mentioned this kind of as a side comment, but I really want to explore this a little bit. For the longest time, as you know, I've been uh, touting the virtues of living alone. And uh, by the way, I had a great weekend. A weekend in which uh, I spent only 45 minutes away from my house to go to Trader Joe's to get some uh, rations for the weekend. And then uh, there I was outdoors just enjoying my time. I was in the jacuzzi. I was grilling was laying out the sun. It was peaceful. And, uh, you know, let's face it, a uh, good uh, deal of that time, I was uh, 100% alone. 100%. No nagging, No uh, nobody telling me, let's go out antiquing or let's go out uh, to the... Uh, uh, to the swap meet or let's... Uh, we have to get out of this house. Let's get out of here. I just relaxed. When I came back after the weekend, I just felt spectacular. And that doesn't mean that I don't get laid. It doesn't mean I don't have a social life. It doesn't mean I don't have friends. I do. And uh, they are there for the uh, for the choosing. When I want to have them in my life, I do. But I am not forced to make conversation with somebody all the time, and I'm not forced to be running around doing things all the time, uh, whether or not I actually want to do something. And uh, I don't have to listen to constant criticism and berating and uh, being uh, told uh, what I did wrong, what I could do better, what I should be doing, could be doing, ought to be doing, ought not to be doing, ought to be doing less of. You know, uh, there's a, a lot to be said for a life where you're always right. How many times do you think to yourself, you know what, I'm always wrong. No matter what I do, I'm wrong. No matter how hard I work, no matter how much money I bring home, no matter how good a person I try to be, I feel like I'm wrong. I always feel like I'm wrong. I always feel somehow like I'm going to be criticized for what I do or don't do. And I felt like that for a long time. And so I, I tell you regularly that uh, until you uh, get over that hump, that fear of being by yourself. By the way, it's a hump. You, you, yes, there is a period of time when you feel sad or you feel a little lonely or depressed, but that's any time a relationship breaks up. Once you uh, get into being by yourself, watching the games you want to watch on TV, eating the food you want to eat at home, uh, getting the electronic gadgets you want or fixing up the house the way you want it or your apartment or whatever, not wasting money on crap all the time, you know, cute crap you see in store windows and stuff like that. You, you just don't know what you're missing. You don't. And um, being that I have plenty of time to sit and think, plenty of time to uh, ponder, plenty of time to, uh, you know, just... Uh, Get into myself, which is my favorite thing to get into nowadays. Um, I, I do think about, well, gee, you know, 
why is it I'm so happy alone, and what is it about women that I'm I'm having a hard time with? Now, people love to give that simple and, frankly, erroneous explanation on here. They say that I hate women. I don't hate women. Um, I do have at least one female friend who slipped through the cracks, and I do have a social life. I, you know, I have a sex life. I definitely do. And uh, I do like to socialize, and uh, certainly uh, people who see me in public see me talking to chicks and hanging out. Uh, you may have seen me at a bar with a chick. If you uh, live in Los Angeles, you may have seen me at a sporting event with a chick. I do get out and about. I do. But there's something about many women, and obviously, again, remember, I'm not using the word all, although people will accuse me of it before the end of this hour. There's something about many women that really turns me off. And what that is, is something I was talking about in an hour of the program when we were discussing Paris Hilton. That is that I really do believe that for many women, the ultimate dream is to become rich without having to lift a finger. I think that's the reason women like Paris Hilton is because she became rich without having to work for it. And her whole life is just going out and looking pretty and being dressed nice and partying and having guys fawn all over her and having all the money in the world to do whatever she wants. I think that's the ultimate dream for many women. And they try to live that dream through relationships, living at your house, getting married, or whatever. Uh, this is really what many women want. Whether it be the woman who calls you up around dinner time and says, what are you doing, and hopes you'll invite her to dinner. I just got rid of one of those not long ago. The woman who calls you whenever you're about to have dinner and says, hey, what are you doing? Hoping you'll invite her along to dinner. Yeah. Or the one who wants free booze and kind of has your schedule figured out and wants to know when you're going to the bar to have a drink so you can buy them drinks. Yeah. Or the women, how about this? It's coming up on uh, vacation time. Here we are, summer season. How many women have uh, suddenly crawled out of the woodwork, gotten friendlier with you, knowing you're going on a nice vacation somewhere? Could be anywhere. You know, my vacations are to places like Spain and Italy and France, or if it's not uh, overseas, if it's uh, uh, the United States, it's Maui or Napa Valley or Key West, or maybe it's Mexico. If I'm staying in the hemisphere, maybe it's Cabo or Puerto Vallarta. Places like that. And uh, it's funny how many women pop out of the woodwork uh, in the summertime to say, Hey, long time no see. What's going on? When are you leaving on vacation? And they're, they're hoping for, to, for an invite. So they don't have to pay for a vacation. By the way, you know where this pops up a lot? If you ever get on these uh, Websites like Match.com, Yahoo Personals, J-Date, Adult Friend Finder, whatever. The number of women who say the following, they say that the headline will be, love to travel. Love to travel. And then in the uh, profile, they will list all the places they've been, which is usually, you know, New Jersey, uh, Northern Michigan, uh, yeah, Camden, New Jersey, whatever. And then, uh, and then they list the places they'd like to go. Italy, Spain, France, Greece, the Greek Isles, uh, you know, the, uh, the Ibiza, you know, the, uh, the island, uh, that is part of Spain, whatever. These are the places they'd like to go. But what they're not saying, essentially, is that they're whores. These are vacation whores. These are the women who, if you call them or if you write to them on one of these dating websites, and you tell them that, uh, my goodness, you know, I was thinking about going to Italy myself. They essentially, without even knowing you or knowing very little about you, will just simply uh, tag along with you. And then if they have to pay in trade, many of them will. You know, when, anytime you see that phrase, whether it's Craigslist or Match.com, whatever, when it says love to travel, that's an incomplete sentence. It's love to travel. On your dime. That's what they're telling you. I mean, you notice how many of these women, if you read their profiles, have never actually gone anywhere. But they sure would love to. And if you're buying the plane tickets, I'll tell you what, those patties are coming off. 
It's like a legal form of prostitution. <laughs> it's pretty lazy. But it's all tied together, this idea that women want to get something for nothing. Yeah, you know, whether it be the woman who bats her eyelashes over there at the uh, Midas muffler shop to get a free tailpipe. By the way, I know somebody who did that. Or whether it be the woman who, uh, you know, invites herself along when you're having dinner or invites herself along on your vacation. Uh, the fact is, or whether it's the women who admire Paris Hilton, it, it's all about women fantasizing about not having to do anything in order to get money, in order to get trips, in order to get clothing, in order to get uh, whatever. And this is one of the things I have a hard time about, about with women, because me, I, I have worked hard. I've worked to be who I am, to be where I am, to have the money I have. And many of the women out there who would just love to get invited along on these trips with me, uh, many of them, uh, frankly, uh, when I was working, they were on vacation, usually with other guys. I know more than one woman who, while I was working, was in you know Italy or Spain or France at one time a year or two or three years ago with somebody else. And now that that relationship is over, now they'd like to go on a vacation with me. Not because it would be particularly romantic or wonderful to be with me or be in my company, but because they get to go on another trip, not have to pay for it. And then if they have to put out, they have to put out. Isn't that exciting? Who needs that? You know, why bring sand to the beach? <laughs> so uh, this summer I'm traveling alone. I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, g g scouting around to see what women I can find to go on vacation with me. I would rather just simply uh, go by myself. When I go by myself, then whatever happens when I'm on vacation happens. And what goes on the road stays on the road. But why would I want to take one of these women along who only goes on vacation when somebody else is whipping out the platinum card? So what I'm saying is I have a hard time relating to women on this level, you know, because me, uh, I always think if I'm going to uh, go on a vacation, I'm going to have to put some money away. I'm going to have to pay for that vacation. If I'm going uh, to uh, eat a nice dinner, I think, well, my God, that's going to cost, uh, you know, if I'm eating at a decent restaurant, $300. That's a lot of money. I actually sit and think about that. You know, I think about how hard I work to make my money, and uh, is this restaurant really worth it? And will I enjoy it that much? I mean, I, I I go through this stuff in my head. And there are women who get their self worth by seeing how much money they can get a guy to spend on them. So the result is, uh, when I go to restaurants, I take my friends. Generally, I don't take women to restaurants. Just like I advise you not to do it. I, I, I take my buddy. If I want to eat it, and people have called in on the show and said, well, I take women to restaurants because I like going to restaurants. Guess what? I like going to restaurants, too. So what I do is I call my friends and invite them. And if they can't afford to go, I invite them and I pay for it. If they can't afford to pay, they pay their half. I pay my half. But the bottom line is, if I'm going to go to a restaurant, I'd rather go with my pals. I'd rather do that. Enjoy the hell out of it. I just can't get behind this idea that women just sit there and look pretty and don't have to do anything. And uh, they don't have to save or invest or take any risks or anything. And I'm supposed to do all that stuff. So, yes, I find this stuff fascinating when I read about these women in personal ads who, who, who quote unquote, love to travel. Oh, yeah, they love to travel. Well, they're uh, letting you know that uh, you're going to be paying the freight. And it's just something about women that makes me feel, oh, you know, I, I just can't be friends with people like that. People who don't work for what they, for what they have, don't earn it. Now, are there women who work for what they have? Sure. They are the less attractive, fatter in the breed. Those are the ones who do have to, they have to work because what man's going to pay for their vacation? So clearly there are women who will work for their vacations. I, for example, I've known women who work to go on cruises, quote unquote, singles cruises. So they burn the midnight oil at the office, and they save to pay for that cruise. Then they go, and uh, they have a few $15 drinks in the middle of the ocean, and then they're hoping they're going to meet some guy and do something really irresponsible. They have enough drinks, or the guy has enough drinks, she'll start looking attractive. Those women pay for their own vacation. But uh, when it comes to going to the places you really want to go, 
Rome, Athens, Paris, London. When it comes to going to places like that, women want us to pay. And they, by us paying, they're even willing to put out in many cases, but us paying shows that their vagina has value. And I, I don't think what I'm saying is the least bit unreasonable, I'll tell you that. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Tom, what's up? The ratings, my salary. <laughs> the Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. And say hello to Anna on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Apparently, I'm having to think now about what the second line in the conversation will be. Give it some thought here. Yes. All right, Anna, pencils down. Uh, what's the next line in your conversation? All right, the music was so loud I couldn't hear you. So, um, you feel so bad about women that get it for free? They get so, what? Wait, wait, wait. Stop. They get what for free? Perks, uh, trips, meals. It so. isn't. It isn't even that. It's that they expect to get them for free. It's not free. What do you mean it's not free? Well, because um, you are absolutely. I disagree with you on ninety percent of issues. However. Um, the thing is, women, you know, if we like a guy, we'll bang him for free. Now, if we have to bang a guy we do not like, but he can provide us with material things, that costs us because it's disgusting. Well, that's called prostitution, darling. I mean, how about uh, you only go on trips with guys you like, and if you don't know anybody who can afford to take you on a trip, you either save up and pay for your own trip, or you wait until you meet a guy you like who can afford to take you. No, I agree with you. So women who that. put these personal ads in there saying they love to travel, but they're really saying they love to travel when a man is paying. Right. That's prostitution. Well, right. And there's nothing wrong with prostitution. Well, but prostitution's how, illegal. Let's start with that. Right. Well, what do you call young chicks that marry guys who are twice their age and have a life of, life of luxury? It's also prostitution, even though they're white. Right? I would say the way the divorce laws work in this country, I would say most marriage is prostitution. Right. So what I'm saying is prostitution is hard work, and it should be legal. I, I'm totally in favor of legal prostitution. Maybe it would take and so some, am I. Maybe it would take some of the pressure off on uh, some of the uh, legal forms of prostitution we have now, like marriage and divorce. Absolutely. So what I'm saying is, though, prostitution, it's not fun. It's hard work. But I will tell you this, dear. If I were going to pay for somebody to go on vacation and have sex with me, I'd hire a professional. Why would I hire the average chunky broad off of Match.com to go with me on a vacation when I can get uh, a prostitute who is beautiful? Exactly. And I can it's be true. proud to be with her. Why, why, if I'm going to pay, I might as well pay a professional. Absolutely. I agree with you. So my point is, you say that women get perks for free. Well, to sleep with a guy who is total fat pig just because he has the money, and I know quite a few girls like that, it's not free. It's pain to do that. Well, they don't have to do it. Well, it's work. You know, like you said, it's prostitution. But even if it's why work, do they even go through the wrong. whole? Why do they even go through the whole charade of implying that they're looking for love? They're not looking for love. They're looking for plane tickets. Absolutely. So that's what's wrong with the society. It should be open and honest. Like, yeah. honey, you're a disgusting fat pig, but you have a lot of money. So taking on vacation, I'm very honest with guys about this, you know? So are you a prostitute? <laughs> no, I'm not. However... Do you accept I, free trips from fat guys? Uh, well, I tried, sort of, and I couldn't take it, and I just left. It's like, you know, a lot was offered to me, and I thought about it, and I worked for everything I have. So, 
I'm just saying it's really painful. Even, I mean, I went out for dinner with this guy, and he was so disgusting, and I knew what he wants from me. And I thought, well, I can get all those goodies. And it was just too disgusting. I by the way, it. by the way, dear, every straight man that goes out with you wants sex. Everyone, whether they're Absolutely. attractive or not attractive, whether they have money or they don't have money, 100% of them want sex. When a man asks you on a date, it's because he wants sex. Absolutely. That, there you're right. There you're absolutely right. But it's so why go out with any? Right. Why go out with anybody that you're not attracted to? Well, because, like I said, you know, you're right in the sense it's prostitution. Exactly. So, so but, you're you're willing to go out with guys you're not attracted to to go to nice restaurants, get free meals? Is that what you're saying? I couldn't. If I could, I would. But what I'm saying, it's hard work to have sex with a guy you're not attracted to. It's hard work. So, and even Paris Hilton, think about it, the price she's paying, the humiliation, everybody's disgusted with her, that's that's not free. That's my point, you know? Yeah, well, I, the, my attitude about it is, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I go on vacation myself. I don't need to take anybody with me. Right, unless... I might add are... that once I get where I'm going, who knows who I might meet when I get there. And by the way, Tom, on a little bit different subject, I have opposite problem. I have problem where I sleep with a guy just because I have, want to have sex, and they get attached to me. So, and then I don't know how to get rid of them. But um, the thing is, like you said, if you go on vacation and you take somebody with you and you're paying for them, it is prostitution. And if it was open and socially acceptable, that would be so much more honest and easy, you know? Yeah than what we have right now. Well, as I've been planning my vacations, I, I, let's face it, I, I am not paying to bring somebody along. I'm not doing it. Right, but if you really wanted to sleep with someone and she was not interested enough unless you provided some goodies for her, but the, do it. The, I mean, I know. But, but here's the deal. Here's the deal. When, uh, when I get where I'm going... Uh, I'm going to be able to uh, meet chicks there. And if I meet somebody there, they're already there. I don't have to fly them there. I don't have to no, pay for their hotel. They live there already. <laughs> no, that's that's right. That's right. But you are you. There are guys who are desperate enough, and they acknowledge the fact that chick doesn't want them for them. And they're still... By the way, that's my point. Like, that's my main disagreement with you in your philosophy, because I agree with you on a lot of stuff. However... The thing is, it's not us that is the problem. It's you guys. It's capitalism right there in a role form. Because it's demand and offer. As long as there are guys willing to be doormat just to get into our pants, we're going to abuse it. Well, that's, that's why I tell guys to turn it around and to show that they themselves are in demand uh, rather than acting desperate all the time. And that's, that's why guys end up paying for everything. It's because they're desperate. Exactly, but that's my point. We can get laid anytime. You guys, I mean, well, you know, like you are not exactly attractive, but you're wealthy, famous, whatever. You can get laid, no problem. Uh, but what about guys that are not famous and they have some money, but they really want to get laid? They well, have to go for then it. Then they have to do they things really like they have to show the idea that they've got potential to make money or exactly. they have to lie about making money but whatever they have to do they then find and then they do it but whose fault it is it is guy's fault because we well, not... well it's everybody's fault because why should a guy have to lie about having money in order to get laid because if he's not handsome enough then that's the thing you know i mean come on let's be but honest. isn't it interesting Nobody when you say that about women fat. when you say that women are fat or fugly oh it's terrible and everybody gets offended well, my point is, you guys want it, and we have what you want. And as long as that is, and it's been forever, that's yeah, what Well, uh, what I tell the guys how to do is to play the fact that uh, any type of woman turns you down, there's another vagina around the corner that will be open for business. Well, how about all the guys I know, and they want my vagina? What about them? So, well, like I said, there are guys that want specifically my vagina, and they let me walk all over them, and I don't even sleep with them. And they let me use them all over the place. Right, but if they treated you like crap, you would respect them. No, no, More no, than no. you do now. No. You don't respect them now. No, Tom, come on, you're missing the point. You don't Where respect them now. They want what I have, and that's classic market strategy. 
Right. Are you an economist, dear? <laughs> no, but I looked into it. I'm interested. <laughs> Five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. It's Diana on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you doing, Tom? Good. Awesome. I just want to call and say thank you because if it wasn't for all your callers and you know their stories and everything, then you know I think so many people just walk around like just retarded. And if it wasn't for your stories, I probably wouldn't know half the things I know now. And I wouldn't have been able to catch the guy I was dating this week. So I'm really excited. What, you caught the guy you were dating? I caught, like, he was telling me he was going to go to London on a business trip. I'm like, okay, that's fine, you know, whatever. And then all of a sudden, you know, I hate to say this because it sounds pretty, like, immature, but good old MySpace, some girls all, oh, you know, can't wait to see you, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, who's this girl, you know? And I look. And fair enough, they were supposed to meet up in L.A. And I'm like, well, I thought he was going to London. And I'm like, all right, I'll let him, you know, do what he's going to do and tell him, tell me whatever he wants to tell me. But, you know, I'll, in the back of my head, know he's Sure enough, um, he calls me and text messaged me, and I get my phone bill, and they're all domestic calls. So I'm like, this is weird. If you're supposedly in London, don't you think it would be an international phone charge? And then the stupid girl puts pictures of him and her on her MySpace of them in Catalina. It's so funny. Now, but here's the thing, dear. What have I told you about people who have MySpace accounts? I don't know. I've never heard anything about you and your MySpace. Oh, I've talked about it many times. If you're in a relationship, the other person does not need a MySpace account. Yeah. Nor do you. Huh? Including me? Including you. You don't need one. Mm Mm-hmm. And what do you need to be networking for? You found what you want, right? Well, at least I thought I found what I wanted. But that's my but point. It nothing. Yeah, but you see what I'm saying here, right? Yeah. But it's very socially accepted. So, you know, I think that's why I do have a MySpace account. But, but again, if, if you don't have a relationship, that's fine. Use yeah. MySpace to hook up or to uh, uh, socialize or whatever. Well, this was a new relationship. I'd only gone out with him for maybe a month before he And you were me. already referring to him as a boyfriend? No, he was just a guy I was dating. I didn't refer to him as a boyfriend. Oh, so why were you even worried about whether he was seeing other people? You'd only been seeing him for a month. Well, because it was his bright idea to say, let's be... Um, Exclusive. Why did you go along with it, though? But I didn't. <laughs> well, you, you did. I you did. Game. You did because that's why you went spying on him on MySpace. Well, actually, my friends brought it to my attention, so I went ahead and I went to go see and follow So up. why did you even care if he went to London? Why didn't you just go off and do your own thing? <laughs> because, I don't know. I do like him. Or I did. Ugh. I did like him. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. I just don't believe some of the stuff I hear. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Like this. Like this. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. You're an absolute inspiration. I go home and bang my boyfriend every night because he just turned me on. Oh, do you think of me while you're banging him? Well, I won't tell him that, but maybe. This is the Tom Likes Show. The Tom Likas Show at 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Let's talk about these chicks who want to. They, 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 I, this is the thing I have a hard time relating to with chicks because I've worked so hard for everything I have. I, you know, I think I finally have pinpointed this years now of living alone and spending time with a glass of wine, listening to. Uh, you know, a little John Coltrane at night or, you know, a little Miles Davis at night or a little Dexter Gordon at night. And you're sitting there and you're thinking, it's like, you know, what is it? What, I've, I've been divorced repeatedly. I kept trying. Why? Why? Relationships couldn't make it work. Why? And th- I don't respect the concept that women expect everything to be laid at their feet. They expect everything to be paid for. 
and they have this sense of entitlement. They just think that that's the way it is. Like, I spread my legs, and you stick airline tickets in there. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I don't respect women for being like that. All women are not like that, but the ones who aren't are women you wouldn't want to see naked anyway, and that is the paradox. Trying to get to the important answers to the important questions here. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Mary on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Is that a question or a statement? Uh, no. Hi, Mr. Likas. Is Mr. Tom Likas? Oh, did you want to talk to him? Yes, very much so. All right, hold on, please. From Hollywood... It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Mary, the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Tom. Yeah. This is not Tom Likas. Oh, hold on. I'll get him for you then. Hang yeah, on. Yeah, I know his voice. Okay, I'm sure you do. <laughs> From Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Mary. Hello. Hello? Yes. This is Tom? Yes. This does not sound like Tom Likas, but I'm going to tell you what I feel like telling Tom Likas. Right, okay? Tell me what you wanted to tell him. I want to tell Tom Likas. Are you sure you would know Tom's voice if you heard it? I know his voice because I've been listening to him and for you, years. And you don't think I sound like him? No, 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 the phone. Maybe you sound All right, you caught me. Hold on, I'll get him for you. Mm. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Mary. The Tom Likas Show. This is Tom? Yes. This is not Tom. All right, I'll get him for you. No, I'm sorry. Let me just tell you. You relay it to Tom. Oh, you want okay? me to tell him? You can tell Tom for me. Oh, you like me to tell him? Uh, I want to talk to him because I want him to All hear right, what I All right, hang on. I'll get him for you. No problem. <laughs> the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Mary. Hello. Yes. Tom Likas. Yes. This is not Tom, but anyway. Why are you guys playing games like this? You want me to tell Tom off? Uh, I, I, you know what? I want you to tell it to him directly. Hold on, please. Mm. It's Tom Likas show at 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Mary. Hello. Hello? Yes. This Tom Likas? Yes. Well, you know what? This sounds like the same guy I just got you talking to. Oh, you know what? You are, you are one smart cookie. I can't put one past you. <laughs> the Tom Likas Show at 1 800 5 800 Tom. This is Mary. Hello. Hello? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Okay. I'm not talking to Tom again, but here we go. <laughs> you know what? Hang Tom, on. Wait, wait. Hang on. Let me, let me, let me get the reaction of the other callers. Lisa? Yes. Who, who are you talking to here? Um, I'm talking, talking to Tom Likas. Mary doesn't think she's talking to Tom Likas. Okay, well, Tom Mar Likas. Mary's entertaining. Okay. <laughs> Tom Likas, you're not going to like what I'm going to say. Oh, you mean you acknowledge it's me now? I don't believe it's you, but I'm going to tell the person on this Well, let me call. ask the next person. Andrew, uh, are you hearing this call with Mary? Oh, my God. Because you sound so different on the phone than you do on the radio, okay? So does everybody. Okay, that's why I want to tell you with your smart <laughs> mouth. You always got to talk about fat women. You wouldn't pay a vacation for no women going right. on a vacation just for... Tom, who want to go on a vacation with you? Well, you'd be amazed, dear. You should uh, hear the. Uh, you should hear my voicemail on any given day. And listen to this: you got money, 
But I have to be sane with you, Tom. You're not the cutest little thing I ever. Well, seen. you're not the youngest little thing, so don't worry. No, I won't be. Invi- young, I won't be inviting you. Putting people down like I you. won't be going on you vacation with anybody your me. age, darling. Wait a minute. Okay, I'm finna jump this subject. You don't believe in God. I wouldn't either. If I looked in the mirror every day, I would not believe in God either. If so what? No real God do this to anyone. Do what? You're hideous looking. And then you always get yeah, so what, ugly. Yep. You got ugly. But all hair. I do, I cover myself in hundred dollar bills, dear, and then I get the much younger and hotter than you. My God, because you got dollar bill. That's all. That's reason. okay. You know what? Uh, so you what? Don't wanna, you don't want to take a woman on a vacation. No, I the don't. The only reason they wouldn't go on a va- on, would go on a vacation was because you got money. Well, uh, again, dear, uh, they, you know, it's amazing. You don't have to give a woman money. She just has to think that long term she's going to get it from you. But look at the price you pay and being with you. Uh, again, darling, you'll never have to pay that price because you're way too old. I wouldn't want to be with you, Tom. It doesn't matter be because at your age, it will never be a question. Uh, don't worry about it, baby. I don't want you just like you wouldn't want me. Don't worry, darling. As old as you are, I don't go that old. You don't. No, you I don't. Go any way you can, Tom. Don't worry, I will, dear. By the way, did you want to talk to Tom? Did you hang up on me? No. Did That's you want to talk to Tom? Tom? But you know what? Believe it or not, I really like you. I, I know you do, dear. Because if I treat you like crap, you come back for more, and you just prove my point again. one 800 800 tom is our telephone number. Lisa on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Um, I don't know whether to slap my mother or hug her for teaching me values because... I don't know. I just can't see sleeping with anybody for a free trip or doing. I've worked for everything my whole life, and I have friends that expect that, that, oh, just hand it to me, and I'm going to slap them, too. <laughs> because, you know, it's just values, you know, and I think a lot of people, their parents didn't teach them right, and they think they should get this, you know, oh, well, spread my legs, and there you go. Give it to me. Well, have you ever seen these personal ads I'm talking about? Really, if you want a good oh, yeah. laugh. I've seen them. I've hey. seen guys do them, too. But, you know, and what gets me is most of the guys that do them aren't hot. Or they're gay, because really, what guy wants another person to pay for his vacation? <laughs> but, you know, it's like I had an argument with my boyfriend yesterday because I use my car for business. I work every day, and he wanted to fill it, the gas tank. And I'm like, no, it's my car, my gas. I pay for it. And it's just the way, it's just what my mother taught me. You know, my mother, I guess, raised me right. Well, that's good. Yeah, and yeah, it's, it has been entertaining today, though. I have to say that. I was stuck on traffic, and I did get vast entertainment today. Well, we love that, dear. Yeah. Well, we love you, Tom, and it is Tom. I, uh, you sound the same on the radio, <laughs> radio and the phone. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. I, th- I think Mary's missing a few cards. I, I think so. I think you're right. Natalie, hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I have a theory about you. I think that uh, the way that you view others and yourself is what uh, causes you to meet people that are that fulfill the way that you view them, so it's a self-fulfilling process. Well, why are there so many other people who call the show who are meeting the same kind of people? Well, I think that 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 because they've been listening to you for so long and they the, you've convinced them because you're so good at you know convincing people about the way you think that they think the same way. Oh, it's because I'm good at convincing people. <laughs> so in other words, they don't actually believe this stuff. I talk them into believe. No, no, they they believe it now, and so you know that's. That's the way that they view. For example, um, if you know, I, I used to be a sales manager, and the the objection that if for, if uh, let's say that I wouldn't pay a certain amount of money for a product myself, and I was a salesperson, chances are the objection that I would have the most difficult time overcoming, or that that I would um, buy a client, would be the one that I myself couldn't overcome so uh, chances are if i had a problem with the price then um that's then everyone i would interact with that would be their problem on that note dear i hate to cut you off but we're out of time our email address tom at blow me up tom dot com the tom like show klsx